the uniqueness of the championship in 78 was, uh, among other things, other than the fact that it was a, a, a big time event with Dallas, it was also, I think, the first time that the any chapter had won both the quartet and the course competition. Uh, is that yeah. right? Uh, yeah, that's true. As a matter of fact, I'm not even sure whether that's ever been done before or since. I know not before. Um, it may have been. I, I think I think Masters of Harmony. Masters of Harmony did it. Did it. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Uh, I, I guess so. I, nothing stays the same, but uh, yeah. I know up until that time that uh, 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 it was the first time. What What was that like in terms of both the quartet and the, the quartet had won? I guess on Saturday night, and, and you all had won. So what? That must have been a tremendous moment. Yeah, it, it was for prim mostly for the uh, quartet guys in the chapter. Um, the chorus guys were were just tickled to death for you know for the for bluegrass and uh, um, but uh, okay they won a championship but you know so did we and and uh, they, were, it, I, they weren't blasé about it or they weren't it it's just that it was an accepted thing and they were glad that it happened. Uh, <clears throat> the big thing about it was is that um, the year before, uh, two years before, the first year the, the the Bluegrass went in, they they were fourth place medalists. And the second year they went in, they dropped out of the medals and went to sixth place. Mm -hmm. And the third year in it, which was this year, they went from sixth place to first place. And so uh, that was uh, kind of a kind of a big thing. You couldn't, uh, uh, and they were they were the. You know, at that time, there had been some young champions before, but uh, uh, pitch hikers had some 23 and 24 year old guys with a 42 year old base, and uh, but uh, these guys were all 20, 21 years old, all four of them, and uh, they, you know, they, they just flat knocked everybody to pieces. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. And. Uh, and then became probably one of the most uh, um, innovative quartets before or since. Well, I guess you could talk about acoustic maybe being somewhere on. And, and some of the later quartets probably took a notice, but Bluegrass did it in 78 and 79, you know, back then. Yeah, yeah. And their longevity for heaven's sakes, 20 some odd years. Yeah, fantastic. Well, let's let's go on into '81, which became a, a very memorable championship. Maybe the most memorable, yeah. actually. Uh, talk a little bit about '81. Well, the, the general general barbershop public always remembers '81, uh, and there's a couple of strange things about that. First is is that uh, in the general scheme of things, our our year was laid out uh, pretty much. Uh, starting uh, like a, a physical year beginning December 1st. First weekend in, Jan in, in December was the show. Uh, if there was a competitive, competitive effort coming up, uh, it started immediately in January. Uh, after the first, the first uh, retreat that took place, it'd be a weekend retreat that would, uh, or a weekend clinic actually, where everything went back to to start in place and everybody reviewed everything and then but preparations went right away and uh, music was to be uh, ready to go by uh, off the paper by the end of January the second week in February at the latest um, choreography to start first of April and you know and right on into the to the June uh, final preparations and then as soon as that contest was over with, then uh, uh, you had to prepare. And then the uh, December show again. If we, if we weren't competing, if we had it in, in the ineligible years, um, as soon as the December show was over with and January came about, then we prepared for a, a, another show, which we did uh, in the spring. So that was with the general... Uh, 
uh, layout of the of the uh, of the year was. Uh, so with that in mind, in uh, the latter, after the December show uh, in in eighty, we had qualified, of course, and uh, and after the December show, it came time to select music, and I don't know whether it was an arrogant thing or a snotty thing or whatever you want to call it, but we decided that we were going into the take the the, the contest songs that we had won with prior to prior five five contests or where it was and do two medleys of barbershop championship songs and that's what we that's what we worked on all through the rest of the month of, uh, of December and uh, all we had to worry about were the modulations between you know between songs and lo and behold at, at our right after the show we get the word that medleys were being frowned upon and that uh, if you did a medley they had to be very complimentary of one another. Mm -hmm. They had to be you know, two rain songs or two sunshine songs or something. Here we were doing uh, about six songs or more songs or pieces of, of these songs that had no relationship to one another at all. And so the first time they said something to me was, well, you know, musically you didn't, nobody will know what you're doing. I said, the guys in the audience don't know what we're doing, you know, that they, but we were pretty much told that the arrangement category would would just wreck us. And so there we sat where we normally had music ready to go and on and, and well into the learning stage with no songs, not you knowing what to do. So this is where the bluegrass came. We took, we took a bluegrass song that they had used, which was uh, I Found My Sweetheart Sally, and then a, another song that that they had looked at, but it came from Ed Wasey also, and it was at South Rampart, you know, the, the Mardi Gras March and South Rampart Medley. Now, that song, after we had done it in 66, was blacklisted because the original arrangement that we had done, the, uh, uh, the arranger had changed the melody around, which is a no-no as far as, you know, the barbershop is concerned. And it had some chords that they didn't accept, and for several years, I mean, nobody used the song. They had actually had a list that came out and said, these are songs that just won't get it done. And, but Ed Wasey was uh, the arrangement category specialist at that time, and he arranged this song, said that he had straightened out all the song, all the melody, all the melody notes were right, and the, you know, the song wasn't doctored in any way, and and he had this, uh, he had this arrangement, and uh, and he said, you, you know, and gave it to us, and so that's what we went with. Those, those and they had to learn them way behind schedule, and the guys really came through. They learned both of those arrangements, and they were relatively complex. Uh, Mardi Gras March was a very complex arrangement to learn, and, and I found my sweetheart Sally was wasn't all that difficult to learn, but it was a bear to sing. I mean, you know, you had to, yeah. and uh, uh, so they they but they did. They learned the music, and that but that was a little bit of a sidelight that uh, you know we were way behind schedule on account of that what we would normally be, but we learned the music and. Uh, 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 he called in, uh, got the guy from, I don't know what the university was, but he, he was a college um, level music guy to set up that, that thing, a guy that, uh, uh, there's a music store over in Cardin, Indiana. Somebody knew somebody over there, and they uh, arranged for us to have uh, 16 brand spanking new, never been used cornets, the you know, to use, so there wasn't any, you know, plastic things or anything for props. They were brand spanking new, never been used. And uh, uh, things were, everybody was, a lot of people were doing a lot of things. And uh, we worked pretty hard on the music, and uh, um, that that's the way that thing evolved. It, uh, it was a very, very big uh, uh, community 
effort, so to speak. But I don't know that I was ever around any thoroughbred thing that got ready more completely so fast. The year before, the Citations had done a show in Detroit at a big, big uh, amphitheater called Pine Knob, and we had done this show up there, and uh, it went it went very very well. And as a result of that, the following year, which was in '81, they invited the Thoroughbreds to come up and do that show. And, uh, and that was another innovation that the Thoroughbreds, no chorus ever traveled. Yeah. I mean, quartets traveled and everything, but choruses didn't travel. And the Thoroughbreds traveled every which way you could go, every way from a dog cart to a, to a airplane. And, uh, and so we were uh, scheduled to do that thing. On May the, uh, I think it was the weekend after Derby Day. Well, anyway, it was the very first part of May, and uh, no, 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 oh, I got taken wrong. No, no, no. It was the last. It was over the over the the holiday, the the uh, Memorial Day holiday, and we we did that whole package, including the choreography, at that pan up thing a full month before the convention. That was unheard of as far as the thoroughbreds are concerned. I mean, to have it something that far now, it wasn't all well that well done, and some of the uh, some of the choreography, you know, didn't quite work out like it should have, and everything. But uh, we did it, and uh, that was a, a big tribute to that bunch of guys that they did everything on a short shorter time period than they normally have worked on it, and. Uh, uh, but I can look at that. Contest the attitude was a completely different attitude from almost any other attitude was okay. You know, it. Uh, I'm I'm prepared. I'm I'll get it. You know that's what each individual you know kind of exuded. It was that that kind of an attitude, and uh, uh, it was there wasn't anything uh, uppity about it or anything like that. But just that they were. They were very confident, and uh, uh, and 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 the rehearsal on Friday night before the contest was uh, uh, attended again by saying we ran through it one time. We didn't do it twice. We ran through it one time, and uh, I remember Jim Clancy was uh, standing over in a, on the side over there, and he walked over. He, he called me an unmentionable name and said, "Are you?" you it's, you really got something going this time. <laughs> and uh, 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 so, and that's the way it came about. I mean, big Cincinnati was was the second place. Uh, let me see. Just hold a second and see if I've got. Oh, I've got it. Oh, I'll show it to. You. I'll show it to you sometime. It came over email, at there on this uh, harmony. Uh, Harmonet or yeah. something. Yeah, Harmonet, yeah. Now, I don't know much about that, but uh, uh, they were discussing favorite competition songs. Yeah. Quartet and chorus. And uh, a guy by the name of Michael Donnell, who was, uh, who is right now a judge, and at that time sang with Great Lakes Chorus. And he wrote this big uh, to-do and I, I have a copy of it. I'll show it to you when I find it sometime. Uh, about he says there we were standing in the wings, and he says the uh, partition uh, between where we were standing and the stage was paper thin. You know, it just drapes, I guess. And uh, uh, then uh, we were to follow a chorus on called the Thoroughbreds, and he's, <laughs> he he went on to describe, you know, what he heard. And he says, they didn't know how, they want, everybody was looking if they could find a convenient exit. <laughs> yeah, it, it's a well-written piece. But uh, it was a very, it wasn't anything arrogant about it or, uh, you know, nasty or anything. They were just very, very confident in what they did. Sure. And it probably, it, I guess it was the biggest chorus that we ever had on stage, too. It was 114 guys. 
and uh, we had a, we had a lot of guys that uh, really a uh, uh, a personal pleasure for some of the things. We had guys, and he had a, a, a fellow who was the major in the army, and he was at Fort Knox, and uh, he he sang with us, and uh, I I still hear from him occasionally, and. Uh, uh, but he can only get to so many, re you know, so many rehearsals. But uh, he sang with us. Um, of course, all of the quartets sang with us. Um, that was uh, that was Hawkins' first first crack at it with us. And uh, uh, let's see, uh, uh, we had a we had a, a reformed alcoholic that uh, that said the thing it took him. Took him out of the out of the bad habit was singing with the thoroughbreds was mm -hmm. singing with us, and uh, and any number of little uh, stories like that within that group of guys that we that we had. It was it was a uh, it, it was a piece of work. I'll tell you that that group they were they were really something, and they just flat nailed everybody to the cross out there in uh, in that contest. And the funny thing about it was is the arrangement category at that time was a change from what it had always been in the past. In the past, it was uh, the arrangement had a, had 100 points to deal with every song, 100 points. Now I don't know why they changed it or not, why they changed it, but they changed it in this period of time in there where the arrangement, if it was a real good arrangement, solid arrangement, you got a zero, and if it wasn't a good arrangement, you got negative points, and if they had embellishments that contributed well, did a very good job and everything, you got plus points. So the goal was actually to get a zero in arrangement, you know. And uh, and if you got a four or five in arrangements, you really had a a, a big thing. I, I don't know why they did that, but they, they did. And uh, we showed up in that, in that uh, when it was over with, we had a minus 22 in the arrangement category. A minus 22. And so then the, the talk went off, you know, well, what, what had happened? Well, I guess, uh, Miller, you knew that you were going to take that blow, and I, I said, are you crazy? I said, if I'd have known we were going to, sure. I wouldn't give up 22 points to anybody for anything, in a, you know, in, a, in the world's championships. And uh, I had no idea that we'd, we'd come up with something like that. Well, musically... They didn't come up on account of the uh, on account of that. It, I, I I was livid, you know, because we had the category specialist range the song, and he said it was all right and everything, and so I was really livid about this whole thing. And I told him, please, I wouldn't give up twenty two points for the Pope if I had, you know, if I was going to sure. win sure. or lose. And uh, 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 so collared a couple of judges, and this one judge said, well. What's really happened there is that uh, this was, uh, you used uh, uh, marching type music uh, and it unduly excited the audience. Oh my. <laughs> well, I'm telling you right now, Roger, when he said that, I tell you what, if ever I felt like giving somebody a smash, boy, it was right then. That's you know, and I, all I could get out was, you know, it seemed to me like that was maybe what we were supposed to do was excite, excite the audience. But uh, anyway, there was a big to-do over it, but we won by a whole bunch of points anyway. And, and uh, But uh, that was the drama, was the, was the arrangement category in, those, in, in that, that contest. Uh, uh, following, that, uh, following that contest, uh, things started to unravel a little bit. Um, uh, through the twenty odd years of, uh, of of glory, so to speak, it was a great uh, juxtapositioning of the music team and the administrative team. I mean, they were just you know just like that. Um, after every contest, after you'd won a contest, there'd always be a certain group of guys, half a dozen of them, that'd say, "Look, we just won a contest. Let's take it a little easy for a while. Do a little woodshed, and you know, do a little, you know." And uh, the administration would say, "Well, 
look, we'll we'll ease back on Jim's terms. He'll ease back on some will, but uh, bear in mind that we're going to probably ease back a little bit on the uh, on the finer points of interpretation and uh, uh, maybe sing a little hotter music or something. And but we're going to be still working on new show music and, and never let up on intensity. And if you can't get along with that, then get out. And uh, that's really just when that's really it happened almost all the time, but it was starting to grow right about at that time. And uh, right then, uh, we had the the new uh, chapter president coming in, decided that uh, maybe that was true. Uh, uh, maybe we did need to loosen up a little bit. And so that started uh, some deterioration that uh, that eventually, you know, tore the chapter apart. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, uh, that same year we were uh, scheduled to work back in Detroit again for a at a, at a suburban chapter out in uh, Wayne, uh, Wayne, Michigan, and uh, we uh, we got up there and uh, we had about had about 50 or six, about 50 guys that went up there. And uh, we lined up and we we had four guys in our front row. And the other, the other guys were all gone. There were quartet guys saying on, you know, shows of their own. Well, that didn't bother me. I mean, I, you know, a quartet guy too, and, and uh, it was, you got a quartet show, you take that. And uh, but at the same time that there was a problem because all of a sudden we got no choreography to do right. because it all triggers off the front row, and uh, so we had that situation to do. So when we came back from that, um, when we came back from that, uh, I explained the, the the problem to everybody and I said we got to you know we we had uh, champion and a couple of medalist quartets and district champion quartets all in our front row, you know, and they were working. I said, we <clears throat> we got some problems, and, and the solution to the problem is going to be uh, we take the quartet guys, and their positions on the risers now will be uh, up the, the, the perimeter on the outside and across the back row. And uh, if they're there, we you know, everything's fine and cool. If they're not there, why? Well, we got a new front row going now, and, and uh, they, you know, if they're not there, they won't they won't be uh, uh, visually missed. And uh, believe it or not, uh, some of the guys in, in some of those quartets just went berserk over that. I mean, they they couldn't they couldn't be there, but they still wanted to know that's where they would be, you know. Yeah. And, and uh, so things got a little bit. A little bit touchy right about that situation. We resolved that, and uh, but then other things started to happen. The, the in, intensity started to drop off a little bit, and uh, I don't know. Things just didn't quite go. In the next couple of years, where you know it became harder and harder and harder to you know to make things happen, and uh, I know that. That what I did was very, very bad during next, that last year and a half or so. Because I, I, I tried every device that I knew. I tried every tactic that I knew. I brought in people that I thought would, would uh, you know, coaches that would make things happen. And and I found out that uh, uh, the only thing that worked was that. And I used it. I mean, I abused them. I, I admit it, and I'm not proud of it. I, I, one of my biggest regrets I ever had was that last year with the with the thoroughbreds. And uh, well, it wasn't the last year, but you're going into that contest yeah. in uh, in '84, and uh, uh, that year we sang uh, a, a Jolson medley, sang "Sunny Boy" and uh, "Took to Tootsie," and. Uh, uh, I um, I really believe that 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 year was the best year, the best singing that we ever did. Now, it wasn't as exciting as '81, and nobody quite remembers it as that. But I believe 
it was some of the best singing it where we really had gotten to where uh, the plan was was becoming kind of second nature and we had gone on into a little bit further along uh, we were using um, uh, and we had pretty much had mastered the uh, uh, Fred Waring uh, tone syllable situation of, of syllable connection you know and uh, uh, I, I really think that was that uh, that was the best thing that we ever did. Um, interesting sidelight on that: they still had time uh, uh, requirements. You could sing for uh, no more than six minutes and no less than three minutes. Your your stage package, and the, the penalties for that were very severe. I mean, if you ran a couple of seconds off one way or the other, you probably couldn't win because uh, I think it was something like five points per judge per second, you know. Yeah. So, I mean, with uh, with uh, uh, 15 judges down there and you go one second over time, it's 45 points, you know. So, you couldn't, you'd go in. So, we had this wonderful arrangement of Sonny Boy uh, done by Bert Zabo and and I was really proud of the interpretation we did. One that I really worked really hard on with a lot of help with, from Hawkins and Joe Connolly, as a matter of fact. And uh, uh, we really worked very, very hard on it. And we got it down pretty good and then put a watch on it, and it was 18 seconds over time. And I, hadn't, I really didn't know what to do. So what we had to do was to, all of the nice stretches and things like that, we had to compress them back in. And we we took the we couldn't take anything off our rhythm song. I mean that was that thing never buried a half a second one way or the other. Anytime any way we did it, and uh, so we had to take a in in squeeze in the interpretation of uh, the ballad. And uh, when it was all over with, and we sang the acceptance at night. And that night we were able to do the thing in its full glory, and it was just wonderful. And I, I begged Joe, Joe uh, uh, Lyles that uh, you know when you when you make the recording, put this you know put Saturday night yeah. on there. You know he wouldn't do it, oh, and uh, I never have forgiven him for that. As a matter yeah, of fact, yeah, and, uh, uh, but it was uh, probably the the best thing that we ever did. And then after that, uh, uh, things were. You no, know, really got bad, and uh, so about it got to be a real chore to go to rehearsal, and uh, and in the you know the following year, uh, matter of fact, it was on my birthday, and Christina was on her way into the, this world, and uh, Kathy's having trouble and at the hospital, and there I was, and the guys were messing around, and you know. And, and I finally said, hey guys, I think I've had it. And I said, I'm going to go to the hospital, you guys. And that's the way it happened. Um, I don't know whether you want to know about that or not, but uh, uh, that's the way that particular thing happened. It wasn't anything, it's just that we were on just different pages together. Mm -hmm. uh, I had I had never ever taken a dime to chorus, to, to, predict, to uh, direct the chorus. And that was by design, because I did not want to become an employee. I wanted to have my fun. My fun came out of the chorus too, and I got my kick out of out of singing well, and and uh, and it seemed like everybody else did for twenty some odd years, you know. And all of a sudden, it wasn't quite that way, and <clears throat> and I realized that all of a sudden, what I wanted to do and what the body of the chorus wanted to do was two different things, and. Uh, I whipped them into shape once before. I didn't want to do that again because that was wrong. That was just plain wrong. What what I did in order to win a contest was just wrong. And so I said the best do is to you know to to, to leave. Uh, but uh, uh, then they, they they did very well after that. I mean, you guys won some medals and well, I, I, thought you, I thought you won a thing in San Francisco. Yeah, I did too. Uh, and I noticed I had for I had not known actually until I watched the uh, video I guess in Hartford in in 1987, and you had come back there and helped well, I was him. singing there. And yeah. you were singing. Yeah. Well, I never did actually leave the chapter. 
Okay. I mean, I, I never left the chapter at all. I just stopped directing. Okay. Yeah, I was. I was. Yeah, I was on the risers. Yeah. What What role did you have in? Uh, were you Were you doing more than just singing? I'm sure in '87. No. Or, or any coaching or anything like that? Or, or no, I maybe? wasn't asked to do anything. And, okay. So you just and, sang in '87. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I can say that maybe right. very, very rarely, occasionally something would come up. But uh, how difficult was that for you? Oh, you don't know. I bet I can imagine. Oh, man, it was really difficult. I can imagine. It was really difficult. As a matter of fact, I, I don't. You know, I, I don't know that. I mean, it was it was really difficult to. Uh, well, it was really difficult. Yeah, really right. difficult because he just. Of course, to say, oh, it was it difficult because they were doing things differently from what I was doing, you know. And, and uh, sometime when we got a, a chance, I don't think it's necessary to talk about it here, but I, I'll tell you about some of the. Those are the, some of the politics that took place after that, yeah. and uh, that's really not important. But uh, uh, there's a lot of things that happened that didn't need to happen. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, but no, I, I never did. I never did. Uh, I never did leave the chapter. I mean, not to this day. I was going exactly. to the chapter. Exactly. So, so Jim, after after Ken. Uh, took a job with the Society in Kenosha, uh, then I guess that was the time you felt like you would step out from being an active singer, is that correct? Uh, or in, in that time. And so then at what point uh, did you go to Cincinnati, I guess is where we're headed from after the, this was 87 when Ken co-directed, I think. Yeah. Well, actually there was one other time uh, right after I left uh, Cincinnati. Uh, didn't have a director for some reason, or I don't know what the reason. But they didn't have a director. Something happened, and they were scheduled to go to Salt Lake City. This would have been in in eighty six. Mm -hmm. Oh, eighty five. Eighty six. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, they asked me if I'd be interested in coming out. Well, I, you know, I, I, I missed directing, missed being around the thing, and, I, and and anyway, I went up there, and I directed them from uh, well, from March, I mean, from April, May. It was three months prior to the contest in Salt Lake City, and their package was was already you know set. I didn't you know have anything to do with the music, set the music or anything. Uh, uh, but we, uh, I can't think where we come in third, no, f third or fourth, third, I think we came in third, I think anyway, uh, in, in Salt Lake City. Now, uh, at that particular time, um, my, my photography business was in a, in a crisis situation. I mean, by that you know, it's, in, in a nutshell, um, it was a situation where I, we were going. We were coming up with a lot of decisions that had to be made, and several different paths that we could take. And I was in no position to make a mistake. I mean, I make a mistake, and I'm out of business. That's what, yeah. in a nutshell, what the score was. And I just didn't feel like I could keep making the trip up there, and 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 be fair to them, you know, and, and so I just had to drop out. And uh, we managed to get through what these things were, made a couple of right decisions, and and, and everything seemed to go pretty good. And then, in, uh, that was in 87. Uh, anyway, I guess it was, I guess it was in 88, or, in you know, anyway, they came in, an unheard of ninth or tenth or something in Kansas City or whenever or someplace. San Antonio in eighty eight and Kansas City in eighty nine. Well, it was in eighty nine in Kansas City where they came in way down the line, and uh, Bob Muckel was directing them, and uh, uh, they came to me again, and 
And the first thing I said was, you got a director. I won't go anymore and talk to you. You got a director. <clears throat> and things kind of settled down for a couple of months. And then at the midwinter, uh, out in um, Tucson, it was approached again, and they said, well, we don't have a director. Bob has resigned. And so I said, well, let me think and check with Rosemary about the thing. And so that's when um, when I decided to go back and, and direct them in and join them uh, right prior to the, to the fall contest, right prior to the fall contest of 89. And so uh, I worked with them a month prior to that contest. We won and qualified. And uh, and that and then we sang our first <clears throat> contest again. I'm trying to think where San Francisco. No, when, when San Francisco? In, yeah, I guess it was yeah, San Francisco. In 1990. Yeah. Yeah, it was in San Francisco. Yeah. And uh, we came in fourth. Behind you guys, you all were uh, second by one point. Yeah. Tied. Tied. Yeah. And and, uh, and we came in fourth. And uh, and then the following year, but then I was solid, you know, going up there then. Mm -hmm. So by then I was pretty well entrenched. They had started to get used to me, and I started to get used to them. And uh, things were quite a bit different up there, uh, for the most part, than what they'd been at the thoroughbreds. Uh, eventually, the important things that we did at the thoroughbreds they came around to that. Some of the unimportant things that I figured I didn't bother with, you know, but uh, we got pretty much going online, and then in the, uh, and then of course we were third. We we were I think we were third. But we were behind you guys, right? Or was it? Well, I don't know. But, I don't know. I don't know. When you when you don't win, I I don't really. Yeah, I hear you. Okay, can't really. Yeah. But we we were somewhere in the middle, third or fourth, uh, in San Francisco, and then comes here in '90. Yeah. Or 91. 90, yeah. And, uh, 91. And we were second to the vocal majority in 91. They're here. And uh, then the next year we won it down in New Orleans. And uh, uh, following that, I stayed up there another three years, but it was the same same kind of situation. It started to deteriorate. The, the quality and the effort was starting to deteriorate. Did I talk about that once before on this, on camera? No, not really. You 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 mentioned it in terms of that that you did not well, want to do the same thing you did with the thoroughbreds. You know, well, the, when we won that contest in New Orleans, man, I was all shut up. Man, I was ready to go, and I I envisioned all kinds of things: new recordings, the new new package show. I uh, had 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 visions of. Uh, of three package shows, I mean, that would fit almost any type of organization. Uh, and uh, all of those shows were uh, adaptable to to, uh, to uh, a 30, 45 minute or a one hour plus time frame. All of these shows could be adapted. We had them all on paper and and had the, all the music ready to go or talked about. He'd given it to Don Gray for arranging. and. Uh, and then we had so got we're so busy. I mean, after that contest in in uh, New Orleans, the chapter was just so busy with district work. We had schools and clinics to do. We had big shows to do. All of the, I mean, for 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 the district purposes. And then we had uh, we had Carnegie Hall, and we had that big. Uh, uh, thing with Mitch Miller, uh, PBS, the, yeah. that PBS thing, the show that went on, uh, the Chicago Theater, with a CAB show in Chicago. These things were all the biggest things that took place in the society, and we had all these things going on. And we did the show uh, for PBS, uh, and they did that at Music Hall in Cincinnati. And uh, when that and when we were doing that show, it dawned on me, we're, we're not really sharp. I mean, we're not really, 
we're not really getting the job done. You know, like I, like I thought we ought to get the job done. And I started to say, well, wait a minute. We haven't done anything. We don't have any new music. We haven't done anything like that. And they were going to build a, a recording studio right in the, in the lodge up there. Hmm. And they got as far as building the booth, just the, the room. You know, put all the equipment in there. They hadn't done any more on that. Uh, the music hadn't come about. Uh, all of the uh, the administrative things that they had talked about, uh, none of that had come about. And look around, and the music, and and we were starting to. It wasn't just quite like I'd like for it to have been. And I said, "Uh oh," and it's gone. I mean, boy, all of a sudden I gave it a couple of tries, and <laughs> they're on a downhill swing, boy. That gold medal and got so heavy that they, you know, they didn't want to lift it too much anymore. And uh, hey, how you I don't know. Come on in here. Oh, I gotta get out here and bring in the groceries. Okay. I swore I was never gonna do this again on a Wednesday, and I got almost two hundred dollars <laughs> worth. It's when old folks go to the store, they get a big discount on first on Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah. We were just talking about that. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, um, and it was that was the start of the the whole thing. I stayed with them until I got them qualified for their next international, which was uh, in Miami in in '95. Yeah. And uh, by this time, I was in the coaching pretty heavy. Marquee and and uh, Marquis was into the we into that pretty heavy with them, and uh, and they won down there, of course. Okay. And uh, we meddled down there, but uh, when that was all over with, uh, I waited through the next district three months later and qualified them again. We won in that, that district again. And I told them, I said, you know, I just, you know, I just can't do it anymore. And uh, because there again, I just wasn't getting what I wanted out of it. Right, and, right. And, 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 I wasn't getting what I wanted out of it, and in order to get the, what I wanted out of it, I would hurt somebody else. And so, which that's what I did in Louisville. I mean, I got what I wanted out of, out of that last time in Louisville in '84, but I was hurting the rest. They were hurting the guys, and so I, I don't want to do this again. So, uh, that that's you know you know the rest of it. We got to be pretty pretty good buddies after that. Absolutely. One one thing we we went through that uh, and I let it go by because I wanted to pay special attention to it was um, I want to talk talk a little bit about the uh, 1976 recording that the society had you all do for the bicentennial. I thought that was yeah that that was uh, that was really something. I just preface this whole thing by saying that we were very active for the society back in those days. I mean, they would come to us for a lot of things. Uh, we did a special prayer service in, in San Francisco uh, uh, with a, a skeleton group of 25 guys or something. We did this, some prayer service thing that we did the, the Lord's Prayer and something else uh, at, this, at this meeting. And that was for society that asked us to do that. We did a recording called Hymns for Men, right. which... Uh, the society asked us to do. Uh, so they're asking, they're asking us to uh, to do this recording wasn't a, an unusual thing. It kind of fell in it. And, and so uh, uh, they brought this music down, this whole show, and we brought it, they brought it right down and recorded it right at, uh, in the old VFW Hall right there on, on Sharon Avenue, which is now the Trinity Auditorium. auditorium yeah. It's got all that stuff on it now that they built on, but then it was just a plain old square building and a VFW place, and that's where they recorded it. And uh, Hugh Ingram uh, did, had a lot to do with the uh, with the writing of the thing, and he was from just a genius with those kind of things. A wonderful guy, and and he was the his narrator on that thing, and uh, he was located out in the in the outer room out there for where they with the uh with the recording equipment and we had to well you've heard the recording have yes, you I, not yes i have it's just a tremendous amount of music that, that was on there i don't know what pieces are of uh, 35 or 40 songs were on there and 
they were periodic songs, the songs that uh, were done uh, uh, revolutionary days and on through the War of 1812 and, and, and the Confederate and, and songs and uh, Civil War songs and uh, right up to the, you know, to the 76 uh, uh, bicentennial days and uh, uh, let's see if I can, the, uh, the signature song was a, uh, I should be able to call that too. I'm trying to. Uh, what a what a what a country. What a country. That's what a country. What a country. What a country. Yeah, da, 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 da. you know, it, uh, uh, a lot of good, a lot of good lyrics in there, and most of the songs were. Uh, by the time I got up to there, were you know slam bang, song right down our alley, and uh, but it was a. Uh, People are here. <laughs> She whispered. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, uh, it was a big thing for us, and it was a big thing for the society. And uh, um, I, it was one I was really, really proud of everybody on that because everybody got a little piece of that thing. Uh, they, uh, they, uh, they, there are a lot of people that got involved uh, musically, uh, production-wise, everything like that. Are they causing you problems? No, that's okay. We're, we're, we're probably, this is probably I don't good. know if I can quiet them down. I don't, no, that's all right, Jim. Yeah. No, I, I wanted to get that in there, and I think we've accomplished what we wanted to do today, okay. which is get through the championships. Yeah. And uh, I think the next session, uh, I'd like to uh, talk a little bit of quartet with you, uh, citations, and especially in, in uh, uh, Vietnam, some, a little bit of that. I think that's important that we, if we do that yeah. from a historical standpoint. And also your coaching, um, uh, when you start talking about marquee and interstate rivals yeah. and all these other quartets, you're talking about the history of the quartet business. <laughs> and uh, yeah. so I think that's important that we need to talk about yeah. that. So, Okay. Um, would it be possible to, to get back to Friday or? Yes. 